Hi, I'm Preston DeGuise, and this is part three of the Networker Architecture Basics. This video collection is designed to help you understand the fundamentals of a networker operational architecture, and it's designed for people who need a bit of an introduction into the various aspects of a networker solution. Now this isn't meant to be a replacement to formal networker training, but it can be used to give you a bit of a head start with this awesome backup and recovery solution. In parts one and two, I covered zones, hosts, operations, and targets. In this video, we're going to cover off save sets and networker databases. If you haven't already watched them, you should watch the Architecture Basics part one and two videos before proceeding with this video. So let's get started with networker save sets. For networker, it's really important to understand what a save set is because at a fundamental level, you'll be dealing with them quite a lot. A save set is an individual backup. I'll provide more details on the next slide, but each backup you execute will be one or more save sets. Whenever you do a backup, clone a backup, or run a recovery, you are in some way performing an operation against a save set. So let's go into some details. Let's start with a simple example. Imagine you want to back up a physical Linux client called Chulak that has a bunch of mounted file systems slash slash d slash data 01 slash d slash data 02 slash home and slash user slash local. Now, with Networker, when you configure a client, you can tell it to back up everything on the client by configuring the backup selection as all. This tells Networker to check what the automatically mounted file systems are for Unix platforms or the currently mounted non-removable file systems for Windows. For Windows, it also picks out some special data areas for system state recovery too. But using our Linux example here, if we tell Networker to back up all on Chulak, it's going to detect that each of those file systems on screen are configured to automatically mount and it will back each one up. Each one of those file systems will be written as a save set to a Networker volume. When Networker writes a save set, it stores a chunk of information about it, such as the originating client name, the name of the save set, when it was written, a unique identifier for the save set, a unique copy identifier for the save set, and so on. We'll cover some more of those details later when we get to Networker databases. But using the example above, if we run an ordinary backup of Chulak based on the above, we'll generate five save sets, Chulak slash, Chulak slash D slash data 01, and so on. Now that's enough for save sets so far. We'll introduce more details about them as we continue in the series. This section isn't so much about how Networker protects databases, but instead a brief overview of the different Networker databases you should know about. I'm going to take you through the NMC configuration, media and jobs databases, as well as the client indices. Now, Networker doesn't rely on any external deployed database platform. Everything it needs from a database perspective is installed with your Networker deployment. The NMC database contains a variety of information about the Networker servers that it's connected to. Using this information, it can construct multi-system reports, which can be very useful if you're administering multiple Networker servers from a single console. That being said, if you've got licensing for Data Protection Advisor, or DPA, regardless of whether that's specific licensing or comes from Data Protection Suite licensing, I'd really recommend you focus on DPA for those sorts of reports. Since it's a multi-platform backup reporting tool, it will provide you a lot more information than your humble NMC server reports. Like any backup product, the Networker server has a configuration database, which is often referred to as the resource database. Each atomic element within the Networker configuration, for example, a pool or a storage node, will have at least one resource. Some elements in Networker can have multiple resources. 
For instance, a physical client might have a resource that defines its file system backup properties and another resource that defines its database backup properties. Now, a resource is a collection of attributes and values. There are a series of resource categories called resource types. You get resource types for pools, clients, storage nodes, devices, the network or server itself, and a host of other elements we haven't discussed yet. Some attributes will appear in all resources, while some attributes will only appear in certain types of resources. I should note here that most of these resource elements aren't something that you need to specifically know about in terms of interacting with Networker in a GUI. Now, two common attributes across all resources on the server are type and name. The type defines the resource category, again, pools, clients, storage nodes, and so on. The name defines what you see on screen when you're working with an individual resource. For instance, remember the safe set example? We mentioned a client called Chulak there, so that would have a resource type of client and a name of Chulak. If you dig down deep, a lot of the types in the Networker Configuration Database are actually prefixed by NSR. So it's actually types of NSR client, NSR storage node, and so on. Now, don't worry too much about that NSR prefix if you see it. It's just a default abbreviation for Networker. You'll see a lot of Networker commands start with NSR, though some longer-term Networker users might refer to it as NISA to make it more pronounceable. I like to think of it as meaning Network Save and Restore. Backup products have to keep track of backup media, right? Well, that's what the media database is for in Networker. It contains information about each volume that's been labeled in Networker. For each volume in the media database, Networker maintains two types of information, volume and save set data. Volume data refers to information such as the media type, like tape and tape format, disk and disk type, and the volume name. Tape-based volumes, for instance, might have a volume name that matches the barcode on the tape. Other volume information includes data such as the unique identifier number for the volume, when it was first labeled, when it was most recently relabeled, for example, when you override a tape that's ready to be recycled, how many times it's been mounted, and various other flags about the state of the volume. When Networker does backups, it writes save sets to a volume. So the other part of each volume's entry in the media database is information about the save set stored on the volume. This includes details like the time the save set was generated, when the save set finished writing, the name of the save set, the name of the client, some status flags, the unique save set identifier or ID, and the unique copy ID for that particular save set the size of the save set and its position on the volume, which is used for high-speed access on tape-based volumes. That's not all the information, but it gives you an idea of the various details contained in the media database for save set data. While we talk about client file indices or indexes, what we're talking about is a collection of database sets for file system backups performed by clients. Each browsable safe set has its own index data. That index data contains a file-by-file -file listing of what's being backed up as part of a file system backup. Of the different database types we're introducing in this video, you'll typically find that the client file index databases occupy the most space. When Networker performs a backup or recovery operation, or in fact pretty much any other operation within the data zone, it will update the jobs database. The jobs database stores details such as what type of job was run, when it was run, whether it completed successfully, and the output from the job. So let's summarize the overall databases that we've looked at. You have on the management console server the NMC database. All the other databases you'll find only on a networker server, the configuration database, the media database, the client file indices, and the jobs database. So that's it for part three. Thanks for watching. In the next part, I'll introduce some final pieces of information you need to understand 
to see what's involved in configuring a backup. Don't forget you can check out the blog for more details, and if you're after a comprehensive understanding of data protection, be sure to look for the second edition of Data Protection, ensuring data availability from your favourite bookseller.